Hey, it's Andrew Huang, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I made a whole bunch of fun sounds like this, and this, and this. Those sounds and the visuals, of course, are from my latest release, Sparkle Mountain. If you haven't watched the music video yet, I highly recommend it. It's nuts. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made every single part of it. Every instrument, every sound effect, the vocal processing, everything. All right, so I think I'm just gonna go through track by track in order. We'll start at the bottom and work our way up. So first is the drums here, which are actually so basic. I use XO almost all the time for my drums now, just to be able to browse around for sounds really quickly. This is the most basic I've ever left my drums. Other than a slight bit of built-in effects in XO, there's nothing on these drums. These tracks are blank. And this is actually super odd for me because normally I would compress all of my drums, but uh, in this case, it just didn't feel like it needed it. Everything was snapping through, feeling punchy. So I think when you have the right sound selected, and of course, depending on what else is happening in your song, sometimes you can just leave stuff untouched. Let's take a look at the sub next, which was all on Sublab with a preset that I tweaked a little bit. It's got a little Gullfoss on it just to brighten it up. And then I just have various side chains on here, also a track spacer to uh, just side chain within certain frequencies. So it's making room for the kick and it's making room for the vocal. Now probably the sound that uh, many people, including myself, are the most excited about, the guitars. So for the main guitarist, I've got one panned pretty far left and another one pretty far right. And here's the chain. They're actually not identical, but they're similar. Let me just turn all these off and play you the raw signal. <laughs> so terrible. Okay, and so this was a guitar recorded direct, like no amp or anything. Got the API compressor on it, so that just makes the volume much more consistent. And then here's something I don't normally do. I auto-tuned the guitar. I just wanted it to be so super perfect and robotic, like a giant mech warrior playing a guitar or something. I don't know. I felt like any variation in pitch, like if I happen to do a bit of a vibrato or just, you know, when you strum a string really hard, it can bend a little bit. I just wanted to even that all out and have it be like this completely consistent in your face riff. Next up, guitar rig, where I've mixed in a bit of a lower octave. And then I ran it through two amp simulators. I've got the UAD Marshall Plexi Classic. And then uh, actually a favorite of mine lately, uh, just Ableton's built-in amp plugin. And it's not at full wet there, but uh, it's definitely adding a lot more crunch and high end. And uh, just to compare on the second guitar track, it's the same chain, but there's actually two amps on the end, just as I was experimenting with creating a slight variation in the tone. So uh, let's just quickly have a look at what that sounds like. Here are the slightly different uh, Marshall settings. Slightly different amp settings. And then a second instance of amp with uh, also different settings. So that's how I got the guitars to sound so huge. Now there's also these other guitar kind of fills in the background. And I actually didn't plan what exactly these would be. I just played a whole bunch of takes of really weird stuff on the guitar, like bends and scrapes and stuff, uh, really high notes, and then uh, dropped all of that into a sampler, turned up the sensitivity to find the transients, and then I could play them across the keyboard and find, you know, little cool moments like this. So in every chorus, those are different and they alternate where they're panning and uh, they both also actually go to uh, different reverbs depending on what side they're on. So there's a Valhalla vintage verb on these return tracks. Uh, there's one for the left and one for the right and I think the settings are, yep, identical. And the last little bit of guitar stuff are these pinch harmonics, which again, were sampled and you know we figured out what to do with them later. This was uh, an addition by Marty that I love. Marty is Pusher, by the way, who helps with some of my uh, production and mixing lately. Okay, and now we are on to the sparkle sounds. 
By the way, I have released a free pack of these. I'll link it in the description. Uh, not only that, I've released another free sample pack of uh, really cool drum sounds that I made with uh, some Eurorack modules. That's called WMD Percussion, and it's free for a limited time. I also, I completely forgot to mention this on my channel when I dropped it a couple months ago, but I finally came out with that Plonk pack. Plonk. Plonk. That one's only five bucks. So uh, yeah, you can go scoop those up at andrewhuang.com slash store if you want. Again, the Sparkles one is free, and the uh, WMD Percussion one is free for, I don't know, I'll leave it free for a while and then I'll probably make it not free when I drop my next free pack. So if you're interested in the super deep dive into the sparkle sound, I actually have a video on it called I Have Made the Most Magical Sound and it's where this entire song started. I think it's really fun to actually look into if you haven't seen it already because uh, it just shows like that ideas come from the weirdest places. But uh, basically it's uh, some basic sine waves being arpeggiated in C major and uh, every time they happen, it's a different set of notes and it's a different amount of delay and reverb. Uh, and it's also a different arpeggio rate. So there's just some basic processing on these sounds, uh, some multiband and EQ to clean up the low end. Uh, in some sections of the song, I did some filtering on them. I think some of the most fun stuff happened though when I did some post edits on this audio. There are a couple places where uh, I reversed them, like in this transition to verse one. I also remember I did some EQ automation on that just to like, have the high end grow during that transition. Just the subtlest details as always, but you know, everything adds up to make the experience a little bit better. But then I think even more fun than the reversing is some pitch shifting that I did in some sections. Like that's just such a cool transition. It just feels all like warbly and watery and wacky and other W words. That's some of my favorite sound design I've ever done. And it was just, you know, from messing around. Now we're onto the synth solo. All credit to Pusher for this. I'm so glad I asked him to uh, play on this rather than me trying to do something like this myself. It's got so many interesting harmonic elements. Uh, it's very playful. I think he half played it, half drew it because there's a lot of very fast, perfectly quantized notes in here. And this is just a basic massive patch that I think he made from scratch. going through OTT, Ableton delay, a uh, basic low cut EQ, and a little bit of portal for even more delay. I thought in this video too, I would share the original temp solo he made, which I already thought was amazing, was gonna go in the final version. And then when Marty came in to mix the song, he was like, oh, that was just like a temporary thing. Do you want me to actually make a real solo for the song? And I was like, oh. Well, it's already awesome. So I guess, yeah, let's see what happens when you're trying. Uh, here's the original solo. <laughs> And I definitely love that one still, but the new one just has so much incredible stuff in it, like this crazy high glide. Going into these arpeggios. All right, now we got a few sound effects. Uh, there's this bubble sound that ends the song. And this is actually a few sounds stacked together. So we've got, I don't even know where this came from. Yeah, three mouth bubbles that have been uh, pitch shifted around and also these ones are going through OTT compression, uh, EQ, another OTT, Marty's obsessed with OTT, and a transient master. And then here's one from uh, my first sample pack with Splice, which is called Plastic Nature. And this was actually like one of those Lego platform pieces that's kind of wobbly and I just wobbled it. Kind of sounds like a water droplet and that is layered onto the bubbles too. Earlier in the song, I used the same sounds as these little uh, effects here, which is the same pop at the end, and then I took that Lego droplet and I pitch shifted a few uh, lower down leading into it. Here's another sound effect, which is a combination of reverse sparkles and just a quick small riser using uh, Ableton Operator. This is after the line about flowers tasting like lollipops, and so I was trying to come up with a sound that would be like a lick, but uh, 
I quickly debated and then shut down the idea of doing an actual sound in the song. This is kind of like my synthesizer candy land weirdo version of that sound without being as disgusting. And then the only other sound effects are these chimes that uh, are actually just splice samples. So we've got... That's a layer of three different bell tree samples. All of those are going to this UAD lexicon reverb. And in other parts of the song, I used uh, slightly different samples. Definitely adds some magical sparkle energy to the song. And then all we have left actually is the vocals. We've already gone through every other sound and instrument. It's a pretty basic arrangement overall. There's just over 60 tracks in the whole project. So firstly, got my buddy Berkeley Pickle to uh, voice the Rebus character. What color are the unicorns? <laughs> there's actually a lot of processing on this. So here's the raw vocal. What color are the unicorns? Going through Gullfoss just to even out the EQ a bit and make it sound a little uh, more glossy. What color are the unicorns? Compressing it with the uh, UAD LA-2A. What color are the unicorns? Giving it some grit with Camel Crusher. What color are the unicorns? A second bit of compression, Ableton Glue Compressor. What color are the unicorns? Touch of DSing from Waves RDSer. What color are the unicorns? And then I've got this rack here where uh, one signal is going to a delay and one signal is going to a Valhalla Vintage Verb. What color are the unicorns? And these are just very faintly there until the second half where uh, he just laughs and then I have them grow to kind of, I don't know, give the sensation of like a villain in their lair. <laughs> So the delay feedback and dry wet get automated up and then the verb decay time as well as just the volume of that chain get automated up. And then I didn't want it to be fully stereo wide with those delays so I knocked it down to 77% with uh, utility and there's a little bit of uh, micro shift for a chorus effect. What color are the unicorns? And then a bit of EQ. What color are the unicorns? <laughs> Whoa, and I did some weird automation there. What's it sound like without that? I was doing some crazy cleanup, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think I just wanted to uh, tail it off, but uh, a normal volume curve didn't work for whatever reason. So I just was trying to get some of those delay tails out of the way of the next section of the song. <laughs> Every once in a while I find something like that, and again, it's so subtle, but I feel like sometimes when I just do a volume fade out, it sounds like a volume fade out, and I want something to, you know, kind of more naturally just kind of drift into the distance. And so that might happen by like increasing reverb, it might happen by uh, this weird sort of EQ move, kind of depends on the situation, but uh, yeah, a lot of the times just a straight turning down of volume sounds to my music producer brain like, oh, I hear someone just working on that volume knob. All right, so now we can look at my vocals, uh, and these were all Melodyned first, and that is frozen now, so we're not looking at the Melodyne plugin, but uh, that's the only thing on here that was uh, baked in before we look at this processing. Doing all of that hard tuning that you can clearly hear. I believe in a place where the Griffins fly. I recorded the vocals with this mic. This is the Earthworks SR314, uh, which is built for live use, but I do like it in the studio sometimes when I want to go handheld. Uh, first of all, it has really good off-axis rejection. It's very directional, but also uh, it reduces a lot of the noise from hands being handheld. And uh, I just like that sometimes when I'm recording a vocal where I want a lot of energy and I want to be playful and I don't want to be rooted in one spot singing to a mic on a stand, but I can, you know, just move around, have fun, play. And uh, so that's why I chose this mic to record the vocals for Sparkle Mountain. I think it sounds great. I'm gonna climb to the top of Sparkle Mountain. Here's the verse chain, pretty basic, EQ, delay, a decent amount of saturation, 12 and a half dB on the uh, default Ableton preset, which I use all the time. LA-2A, the best vocal compressor, and then uh, some additional harder compression with Ableton stock compressor. On the pre, it's a similar chain, but I add in little Alter Boy to jump it up an octave and do a little formant shifting. Violet Valley, sugar like a daddy, never gonna stop 
till I get to the candy. Little pitch drop automation at the end there. I really like that here I just kind of like chopped off the pre-chorus and there's a small moment of silence before the chorus vocal comes in. Uh, I just think it adds to the impact of it. If you go back to that magical sound video, you can hear how the song was originally where uh, I kind of allow myself to finish that syllable and then uh, the reverb rings out a bit and um, you know, it kind of blends a bit more into the chorus and it's fine, but I feel like just having this pitch drop and all of the reverb get turned off made it so much more impactful. On the chorus, the vocals are double tracked, so there's always two different takes at the same time and they're processed uh, individually but identically. So we've got a bit of overdrive, adding more distortion to it, uh, there's some saturation, and then again the same compressors that I use on pretty much all my vocals. And then on the bus of all the chorus vocals we've got uh, this uh, volume automation for mixing and uh, basic delay. So that distortion definitely helps the chorus sound a lot more aggressive. I'm gonna climb to the top of Sparkle Mountain. But then all of these vocals go through a final chain together where it's just a low cut plus, of course, a little touch of OTT, 20%. We turn that off, you can hear that they just sound a little bit duller. I'm gonna climb to the top of Sparkle Mountain. I'm gonna climb to the top of Sparkle Mountain. And then one of the last things to be added to the song is this resampled part of my vocal uh, that we put on the intro just to make it a little bit different from the verse, just to have something going on there at the start of the song where it's instrumental. So that's one little syllable that I sang somewhere else in the song, getting pitch shifted around and going through a bunch of delay and reverb and um, OTT. So that is the full Sparkle Mountain production breakdown. Hope you got something out of it. Uh, I haven't really done a video like this where I just break down every single track in a song. So let me know in a comment if you like this kind of thing, if you want to see me do it more. Uh, don't forget about those free sample packs. Uh, well, two of them are free. One of them, the Plonk Pack, is just five bucks. But um, yeah, those are linked in the description. I hope you're having a sparkly day.